हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू दि ए पी जी पाठशाला इन टूडे लैक्चर वी विल लर्न अबाउट स्ट्रक्चर एंड फंक्शन ऑफ इको सिस्टम द लर्निंग ऑब्जेक्टिव आर टू अंडरस्टैंड इको सिस्टम कंपोनेंट्स एंड स्ट्रक्चर द की फंक्शनल कंसेप्ट ऑफ इको सिस्टम्स एनर्जी फ्लो एंड न्यूट्रिय साइकिलिंग आर लिंक्ड फूड चेन्स एंड फूड वेब्स ecosystem regulation stability socio ecological systems and ecosystem services as we know that the ecosystem has been a key organizational concept in ecology the ecosystem concept has provided a conceptual framework for studying structure and for sustainable management of natural resources ecosystem concept has proved to be of practical value to understand the complexity of natural systems and ecosystem properties it is an important theoretical and applied concept for studying global change and human environmental impact a lake an island or a watershed are good examples of ecosystems in the context of systems theory of ecosystem analysis so ecosystem ecology we will discuss a brief history ecology is a young discipline about 120 years old whereas ecosystem ecology is 75 years old sir arthur tensley used the term ecosystem in 1935 Another well-known worker has been Charles Alton. He was a British ecologist, emphasized the trophic dynamics concept in ecology. Alton's high arctic food web is one of the classic studies. Raymond Lindemann, while working on the Cedar Bog Lake in Minnesota, USA, gave the trophic dynamic concept in 1942. He popularized the idea of the ecosystem as an energy transforming system. Now we will understand the concept of the ecosystem. In this word ecosystem we have the system which is a regularly interacting and interdependent components forming a unified whole ecosystem. an ecosystem thus is an ecological system in which a community and its physical environment form a functional system now we will discuss some of the ecosystem definition an ecosystem is a basic unit of nature particularly category of physical systems consisting of organisms and inorganic components in a relatively stable equilibrium open and are of various sizes and kinds the definition given by tensley in 1935 another important definition has been given by odom which states that the structural and functional unit of nature An ecosystem is the structural and functional unit of nature that includes all the organisms in a given area interacting with the physical environment so that a flow of energy leads to clearly defined trophic structure biotic diversity and material cycles another definition of ecosystem is a dynamic complex of plant animal and microorganism communities and their non living environment interacting as a functional unit an integral component of which are humans also according to the united nations 1992 now we'll discuss the components of an ecosystem the ecosystem has two major kinds of components abiotic and biotic components the abiotic components are like the climatic factors like solar radiation temperature 
which determine the abiotic condition within which organisms carry out their function. Soil is another abiotic component, it is a medium for the growth of plants, represents a mixture of minerals and organic matter capable of supplying all the essential nutrients and water. So, this figure summarizes the components of an ecosystem. We have abiotic components and abiotic components. The various abiotic components are represented by climatic regime and edaphic factors. The climatic regime refers to the sunlight, the rainfall and temperature. Edaphic factors include soil, minerals and topography. In this diagram, the biotic components are represented by autotrophs and heterotrophs. Heterotrophs are further subdivided into saprotrophs and the phagotrophs. So, the biotic components of an ecosystem, the organisms make up the living part of the ecosystem, the biotic community. They are divisible into producers and heterotrophs. The producers are the chlorophyll bearing organisms which produce their own food by capturing the solar energy and utilizing the simple inorganic abiotic substances. In terrestrial ecosystems, the autotrophs are generally rooted plants such as herbs, shrubs and trees. In open water such as deep aquatic systems and oceans, the dominant producers are phytoplankton which are mostly microscopic organisms that float or drift in water. The biotic components of the ecosystem also include phagotrophs, which are mainly animals that ingest other organisms or particulate organic matter. The saprotrophs are certain types of bacteria and fungi, also called decomposers. These break down complex dead organic matter into simple forms, absorb some of the decomposition products and release inorganic nutrients that are reused by the producers. So, this is an illustration of the abiotic and biotic components of the ecosystem. Here are shown the producers with the green color which are including the plants and the phytoplanktons. Then the energy from the producers goes to the herbivores and then to the carnivores and then the energy is transferred to the decomposers. So, there is also the movement of the materials among these components from producers the nutrients go to the herbivores and carnivores, then to decomposers and then they are returned to the soil, water and air. So, they are the available nutrients. So, there is a flow of energy and the output of energy in the form of heat from producers during the process of respirations. The heat is also lost from herbivores and carnivores. Similarly, there is energy dissipation from the decomposer organisms. The material flows occur also through these different biotic components of the ecosystems and the boundary of the ecosystems are not precise. So, it is been shown by a dotted line. So, ecosystem structure is a network of interactions between abiotic and biotic components of the system. Can be uh, organisms present uh, can be studied by its species richness. Then we have the resources, the physical material, organic and inorganic of the environment that is exchanged among organisms. And then there is there are regulators, the physical conditions of the ecosystems, water availability, topography, temperature and light. 
So, we have the ecosystems at different spatial scales. The ecosystem as the small scales are represented by the forest stands, which are an assemblage of the trees of different species. Uh, the watershed is a drainage area uh, where the water flows from different directions to a common point. Another hierarchy for studying the ecosystems are the landscapes. They are the interacting ecosystems of a given area with a precise boundaries. So, the ecosystems are hierarchically structured as this as we have explained that they are occurring from the forest stand to the water stand and the landscape level. And the patterns manifest and processes operate at distinct special scales. Stratification which refers to the vertical structure occurring in an ecosystem. So, this is a profile diagram of a tropical rainforest of the Silent Valley of India. In this stratified ecosystem, we see the plants which are result of different environmental conditions and they occur in different strata vertically. So, the example of a vertical structure in an ecosystem are the tropical rainforest, where vertical structure consists of different strata of plants. So, the important concept in ecosystem is the ecosystem boundary. In some cases, the boundaries of the ecosystem are reasonably apparent, as in the case of a pond or a lake. The pond or a lake also is associated with the catchment or watershed, from which it receives the inflow of water as well as of a variety of inorganic and organic substances. The lake and its watershed constitute a distinct ecosystem with its well defined boundary. The watershed, the Hubert Brook forest of the New Hampshire, a watershed that describes an area of a land that contains a common set of streams and rivers that all drain into a single larger body of water. The Hubert Brook ecosystem study pioneered the small watershed technique as a method of studying ecosystem processes. The key ecosystem functional concepts of ecosystem are they are thermodynamically open which exhibit the exchange of matter and energy with their environment. Some key ecosystem functions are energy flow, food chains and food webs, biogeochemical cycling, ecosystem development ecosystem regulation and stability. So, in this diagram we see the unidirectional flow of energy with the dashed lines from the sun through the biosphere. The cycling of nutrients has been depicted with the solid lines around the circles. So, the unidirectional flow of energy in an ecosystem is a universal characteristics, whereas the cycling of nutrients occurs through different components of the ecosystem. In this schematic diagram, there is a representation of the energy flow and nutrient cycling. Again, it shows the unidirectional flow of energy from the sun to producers then to herbivores, carnivores and decomposers. And there is a nutrient cycling from the different trophic levels and ultimately the nutrients are returned to the atmosphere, soil and water for reuse by the producers. This is another way of uh, showing the energy pathway through an ecosystem from a external environment to producers, to herbivores, then to carnivores and the top carnivores. And then the energy transfer from all the trophic levels occurs to the decomposer compartment. And the dissipation of energy is shown by the heat output from different trophic levels. Food chains and food webs. A trophic level is the position occupied by an organism in a food chain. 
it is a linear arrangement of trophic levels in which the energy flows. We have two types of the food chains, the grazing food chain that starts from the green plants and constitutes the grazing pathway. The green plants, the energy goes to the herbivores, the first order carnivores, second order carnivores, these are the different links shown. And some examples of the grazing food chain are from grass to deer to lion. And then another type of the grazing food chain is phytoplanktons, eaten by zooplanktons, zooplanktons eaten by fish, and ultimately they are consumed by men. Detritus food chain. In some cases, the principal energy input is not green plants, but dead organic matter. These are called detritus food chain. Examples of detritus food chains include the forest floor, a salt marsh, the ocean floor in very deep areas. Forest floor food chain could have links as shown in the diagram. They are the dead leaves. From the dead leaves, energy goes to the fungi, to the columbolas, and to the predatory mines. Then we have the food web concept. An ecosystem contains several food chains. Often these are food chains which are interlocking to form a food web. Food web provides useful way to stress, describe the flow of energy through an ecosystem. A food web is complex network of interconnected food chains as shown in this diagram of the Antarctic food web. Food webs are useful in studies at the ecosystem level. Next, we will describe the vertebrate food web for the Bear Islands in Svalbard, Norway, in the high Arctic region. So, in this food chain, the base is formed by the plants, which are lichens, the vascular plants and mosses. These plants are eaten by the reindeer. And there is a, also the interconnection of this food chain with the invertebrate food web. So, this food web has actually been studied in the Arctic regions of the Svalbard. Nutrients move through the ecosystem in biogeochemical cycles. This is described as bio for the living, geo for the earth and water and chemical cycling. The biogeochemical cycles are of two types, gaseous and sedimentary types. In the gaseous cycles such as nitrogen and carbon, the reservoir is in the atmosphere or hydrosphere. In sedimentary types, for example, phosphorus cycle, the reservoir is in the lithosphere. Now we will show the movement of nutrients through an ecosystem. So, in this diagram, we are illustrating the nutrient cycling in an ecosystem. The nutrients for first are taken up by the autotrophs and they are bound in the organic matter and move along the food chain to heterotrophic level and ultimately from all trophic levels within the detritus to the decomposer food chains. The decomposers break down the complex organic compounds and release the nutrients into the soil from where they are again taken up by plants. So, this is a nitrogen cycling in a necroforestry system where the pool is in the soil. There is a nitrogen stock in the below ground parts of the plants and in above ground parts of the plants. And there is a nutrient movement from the roots of the plants to the above ground plant parts. From the tree layer, the nutrients are returned in little fall to the soil. Similarly, from the herb layer, the nutrients are moved to the soil. This dead organic matter in the soil is decomposed, which breaks down the complex organic compounds to release free the nutrients into the soil, where which are again taken up by the plants. Maybe there is some repetition, you can do it, I think. Another important concept related to ecosystem is ecosystem development. It originates from the Latin word, the succeeded to follow after. 
It is an orderly process of community development that is directional and predictable. Results from the modification of physical environment by the community. Succession is community controlled even though the physical environment determines the patterns, the rate of change and limits. Succession culminates in a stabilized ecosystem in which biomass and symbiotic functions between organisms are maintained per unit of available energy flow. So, this definition has been given by uh, e. P. Odom in 1969 in a paper published in Science. Now, we will discuss ecosystem regulation and stability. Ecosystem is an open system with built in homeostatic mechanisms. The ecosystem is an open system as well as a cybernetic system. An open system is a system because the requirements of an outside input in the form of solar radiation an output to the environment that is heat for continued operation of the system. A cybernetic system, the open systems when some of the output information may be fed back as input to control the functioning is called cybernetic system. A specialized kind of system response is called feedback. Now, we show that what we mean by an open system? There is a representation of the system, a collection of parts and events that make a whole. So, this system accepts the input of energy and gives out the output of energy. So, this is a representation of the open system. When we say an ecosystem is a cybernetic system, when some output of energy is being fed back to receive further inputs. And this occurs through the negative feedback loop. It is a special kind of the system's response. There is a negative feedback loop. So, the ecosystem is a cybernetic system in the second part of this figure, where the output is used for accepting the further inputs for making the system to work. It occurs through the negative feedback loop in the system. So, now we will discuss resilience and resilience st resistance stability in ecosystem. In ecosystem stability has two components, the resistance and resilience. The resistance stability is the degree of deviation from normal operating range of the ecosystem function. The resilience stability is the time required for recovery of the normal processes from a disturbance. The resilience is the rapidity and ease with which a system returns to original equilibrium state following perturbation. It is the time needed for the system to return to its pre disturbance state. So, now what are ecosystem processes? They are the fluxes involving biotic components and include photosynthesis which results in primary productivity, the decomposition of dead organic matter by soil microbes, the consumption of living parts, plants or plant parts by herbivores and the consumption of herbivores by carnivores is carnivory. Photosynthesis and chemosynthesis respiration, decomposition, herbivory and carnivory. In the process of photosynthesis, it is the conversion of light energy into chemical energy. With the use of inorganic compounds, it results in the formation of the complex compounds. In the photosynthesis, we have the C4 photosynthetic pathway, about 80 percent of vascular plant species fix carbon by C4, C3 pathway. The C4 photosynthetic pathway about 3 percent of the global flora, they carry out the photosynthesis by using the C4 pathway. Then another pathway is the chem photosynthesis, about 10 percent of the earth's flora, they carry out photosynthesis through chem. 
In this diagram, there is a representation of the process of decomposition, which is mediated by heterotrophs. The heterotrophs, they are converting the complex organic compounds to simple inorganic compounds with the release of heat to the atmosphere. An accepted pathway of decomposition we can describe as development of philoplane microflora, colonization by saprotrophic microorganisms, combination and ingestion by invertebrates, microbial colonization and utilization of fermented litter, formation of stable organic mineral complexes. Herbivory is an ecological process. It is a key ecosystem process that reduces biomass and density of plants or plant materials, transfers mass and nutrients to the soil or water column, and affects habitat and resource conditions or other organism. Herbivory refers to the ingestion of living plants or plant parts by heterotrophs. The herbivory in different type of the ecosystems is shown in this table. In the desert scrub, the herbivory ranges 2 to 3 percent. In the forest, herbivory is 4 to 7 percent. In temperate grasslands, it is 10 to 15 percent. The, the herbivory in different type of ecosystems has been reported by Singh et al. in 2015. Carnivory refers to the ingestion of herbivores and other heterotrophs by animals. In this diagram, we have shown a whale, which is the largest animal. It is a carnivore. It feeds by taking the huge gulfs of water and then filtering out tiny shrimp-like creatures called krill. Another example of carnivore is the biggest land-based predator in the world is polar bear, which feeds mainly on the ringed seals. Polar bears are the top predators in the Arctic marine ecosystems. A natural ecosystems and human systems, their relationship, the ecosystem resources and services are dependent on energy biogeochemical and hydrological cycles and the various types of human uses, which have an effect on these flows. Human activities have an increasing impact on all the processes that govern ecosystem properties. The human use of ecosystem services and support depend on the proper functioning of local ecosystems linked to other multifunctional ecosystems. The relationship of natural ecosystems and the human systems. Ecosystems provide material to humans in the form of various ecosystem services. The ecosystem resources and services depend on hydrological and biogeochemical cycles. Human activities and increasing impact on all the processes that govern ecosystem properties. In this diagram, we show the concept of ecosystem services. They are the benefits people obtain from the ecosystems. There are four categories of ecosystem services. The provisioning services, they are the products obtained from ecosystem, such as the medicinal plant. Regulating services, the benefits obtained from regulation of ecosystem processes, such as carbon sequestration, shown in the picture. Cultural services are non-material benefits and supporting services are for the production of all the other ecosystem services. Ecosystems constitute, to conclude uh, from this lecture, ecosystems constitutes a dynamic complex of biological community and their non-living environment interacting as a functional unit. There is a unidirectional flow of energy and cycling of nutrients in ecosystems. Ecosystems contain several food chains, often these food chains are interlinked to form food webs. Ecosystem processes are photosynthesis, respiration, decomposition, herbivory and carnivory. Ecosystem services are the benefits people obtain from ecosystems. They provide the life support services naturally on which the socio-economic system depends. Thank you.